In this video, I'm going to show you how to design a complete offensive system based around the Madden 24 meta, and we're going to, or the Madden 23 meta, and we're going to use this as kind of a, a template, if you will, that we can cross apply to probably Madden 24, any other Madden really. Um, and this is kind of how to go about building an entire offense from the ground up. Now, um, we obviously know that there is um, effective routes, effective concepts out of the tight slots. Halfback week formation. This is in the Bengals playbook. If you want to get my entire uh, tight slots halfback week offensive ebook, uh, the link to join the Patreon is going to be in the description below. It's only ten bucks. It gets you access uh, to all of the ebooks, so you can merge like bunch offset with tight slots. Um, we have over twenty five different offensive and defensive ebooks available, and we just dropped a massive update in the Patreon, kind of breaking down some stuff that we anticipate is going to work really well in Man Twenty Four. So uh, again, if you want to get access to all that, the links in the description. Why Cincinnati uh, Bengals for tight slots? Really for this play post wheel drag. Um, and then also you have the play flood, mesh spot, and four verticals. And this play post wheel drag gives you a really good post right on the left side. It also gives you kind of a seam wheel uh, to the slot receiver. And, the, you know, you want to look for routes or plays that have power routes. Typically a power route is either a corner route, like out of the play flood, a post route, like out of the play, post will drag, flood, and mesh spot, or a wheel route. Typically, those are the three most powerful routes in Madden um, year over year. And tight slots happens to have all of them in multiple plays within the formation. So already, it's a it's a step above. And uh, and then I'll talk about like how to go about building a scheme. So. The first thing you have to do is you first you want to identify what is your power play. And typically a power play is going to be one of the five foundational passing concepts in Madden. And it's going to be extremely effective specifically out of the formation that you're running. Now the five foundational passing concepts in Madden are the sail, the cross, the stick, the seams or the verticals, and the shallow. Those are the five foundational uh, passing concepts in, in Madden every single year. And we have a, a free ebook you can get in the description that will explain that. But what we're going to show you today is how to kind of dive all into the simplicity factor. And I want to just say something real quick about simplicity. And then like I said, we'll get to some setups. So the big thing about simplicity, why do you want to be simple on offense? You want to be simple and effective. That is a really key distinction because if you're simple and effective, then you're going to be able to essentially measure twice, cut once is the idea and to be very intentional with your play calls. So back to the power play, it always it all starts with some type of power play. What is the best play in your formation that you can run at the most, um, that you can run the most consistently and always have an answer for anything the defense is going to do. In this year's game, Madden 23, the best power play in the game is this play Flood. And the reason why is because it has answers for anything that the defense is going to try to do. Now, all we're going to do for this play is we're going to put the right side receiver on a slot apprentice post. Now, if you don't have a hot route master slot apprentice, just put him on a smart routed in route. And what you'll see is consistently... I will be able to run this against any formation in the game, any coverage in the game, any defense is very difficult to stop. The other thing real quick about tight formations, I've talked about this before, but um, not only can this be man coverage, it can also be zone. And the reason why is because our flood is going to be to the short side of the field. And what that does is it allows this deep post to be a clear out route. And then you can throw this and catch it consistently against a quarter or a uh, outside third zone. So then the last base coverage that you have to be able to at least have some type of basic plan for is going to be match coverage. And what you'll notice with this is if they run a match concept, this uh, post is going to be one-on-one -on -one over the top for a potential touchdown. Now, what a lot of people also will do uh, when they're running match is they'll put this guy on the left in a deep half um, to try to help uh, basically prevent against different types of ways that people will bomb match coverage. I'm just getting screamed at here. But when they do that, what it does is it will actually make this, if I can actually have a second to throw, um, it will actually make this significantly harder uh, to stop this flood play. So again, we're going to put the safety in a deep half. And this is why the post is so good. But what you'll see from this deep skinny post is now he's isolated. And before you know it, he's going to cook that coverage over the top for a touchdown every single time. So 
the beauty of this is it kind of puts them in a position where it's really, really hard uh, to guess right. Like it's really difficult for them to be consistently right in terms of how they're going to defend you. Um, this is just straight match, and I'll show you. This probably honestly does the best job, but you can still kind of throw that before he gets to the KO, and you can act back to the ball. Another thing that you can do is, you know, again, just by hitting your post route or hitting your drag routes, okay? So that is always available. So now that you have a power play, again, real simple, one hot route, we're able to snap the ball and be very effective and efficient at attacking this left side of the field. One of the biggest things you have to understand is you have to basically ask yourself a couple questions. The biggest question you have to ask yourself is what is the best way they can defend me? Um, and, and specifically your power play. So there's a couple things that they can do, but at the core, typically you're going to see a, a 25 and 5 uh, Mabel coverage. And the reason why is because it's going to be the most consistent way to defend the play flood. So if I go to Tampa 2 here, typically what you're going to get is you're going to get a double flat and then you're going to get a roll coverage that basically rolls them into this coverage right here. To me, this is the best way to defend um, to, to defend flood. OK, so what we can do off of this is say, OK, what is a good counter play um, that is going to basically counter what they're trying to do? And I think one of the best plays is the play mesh spot. So all we're gonna do with this one is you see how we have this sharp cutting post route. So we're gonna smart route that route. You don't have to do that, but you can. We're gonna flat route uh, Randy Moss. We're gonna slant uh, the slot receiver. And then we're gonna use our tight end on some type of flat route. It could be a traditional flat route, or it could be an out route that's kind of up to you. Um, in Madden 24, I would recommend the flat route, but up to you. Anyway, what you're going to see here is this is going to pull the zones out, and now I'm able to hit that slant route because they don't have any yellow zone over on that side of the field. So then if you think this through, um, what's going to happen? What are they going to have to do? Well, they're going to have to user that, and so they're going to have to be essentially a hook curl defender underneath to take that away. The problem is now they leave themselves very vulnerable on the backside of this. And what you'll see is this running back wheel will basically serve as a clear out. It'll take the deep half and I can throw this over the top just like that for a potential huge play um, against the defense. Now, as you saw right there, sometimes the KOs will go crazy. I'll show you one other thing um, that you'll also need to have a plan for and we'll talk about in a second. Um, and again, this is provided that they are dropping eight in coverage. Typically, they don't, honestly. Um, so that's just something to note. But again, you'll see here this wheel. I can freeform that to the left side, and that can be a potential big play as well, um, even, even when they have a lot of underneath zones. So one of the other things that you might see people do is they may go with a coverage like this where they say, okay, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do a double flat, but we're gonna take away that running back because we don't want him to run those seam wheels. And then we're going to have a coverage, you know, that maybe looks something like this. This is why I really like to smart route that post route, because what you'll see is when we smart route that post route, it'll run a little sharper. And what will happen is this post route will get over the top of that coverage. And I can get that over the top for a pretty big play. So you see how these 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 two concepts really, really work well off of one another. Now, the last piece of this is one of the things that we're consistently seeing is that they are playing uh, typically some type of cover three. Um, you know, another little piece of this is what if they send five? So if they send five, typically that's going to be something like this, and the user is going to be here. This is a really good setup for a send five pressure. What we're going to do is go to four verticals. We're going to put the left side receiver on a post, the running back on a streak, and then we're going to hitch that right side receiver. What this does is it gives us two quick flat routes, but it also gives us this little hitch in the middle of the field because the user is either going to have to go to the running back or he's going to have to go to the hitch. So you see how that's able to counter that as well. And then the last little piece of this is this play post wheel drag. And this is why this play is so valuable. This play is so valuable because eventually you're going to kind of walk them into a situation where you're probably going to see a coverage that looks something like this. And like I said, um, you know, maybe they have the running back manned up and they're you're gonna use her over in this little pocket right here typically, but basically they're always gonna roll their uh, zones over to the short side of the field. So what we're able to do with a play like post wheel drag is we are gonna utilize the running back as a motion out streak 
And then from there, you really can kind of just snap the ball. Um, this is a real simple setup. What I like to do with this um, is you could even do a drag from circle and a trail route from the tight end uh, is another option. Or you could do a hitch flat combination on the right side. Um, or, you, you know, you could do something like this here. This is a really good setup because what will happen is they're going to go with that post. You can playmaker this across, but you'll notice here, and that was kind of a bad uh, animation. Uh, but what you'll notice is that this post route, it doesn't matter if they have 30 yard clouds, it doesn't matter what zones they have, they're not gonna be able to consistently defend this post wheel drag play. And so what you'll see here, again, if I just ran it just like this, this is a fine setup. Um, you'll see if you watch this post route, I can throw this when he crosses. I just wanna add back to the ball so that I can avoid the KO. And as you can see, it's just a great way uh, to be able to break down different coverages. The other little piece of this is a man-to-man -man blitz meta. So if you're getting a man-to-man -man blitz meta where they're sending uh, five consistently, one of the coolest things about this formation is this slot receiver pretty much never is going to get pressed. So what we can do is we can utilize maybe a block tight end, go back to that post wheel drag play for a second, and we're going to utilize a block tight end. We're still going to motion that running back out so we can pick up the pressure. But now we're going to run a slant as well to that side of the field. And this just adds a man-beating principle to this already really good play. And now you have three or four routes that it's going to be able to consistently beat man-to-man -man coverage. All in all, the tight slots formation is perfectly equipped. And what I want to really pick out a little bit here as we close is simple and effective. Simple, efficient, effective. What is the most efficient way to call your plays? And how can we simplify the playbook so that we can maximize our execution and make our offense, make it so that we're always calling the most optimized, fully effective plays? This formation gives us the best way to do that because these four plays right here can literally do everything you need them to do. This is why the Tight Sox Halfback Week has been the best offense for the last two years, and I anticipate it's gonna be the best offense in Madden 24. So if you wanna learn this entire offense, all the ins and outs of it, join the Patreon today for just $10, and you'll be able to get the entire ebook on this formation. Thanks for watching the video. If you wanna sign up for the Patreon, head down to the description and go click the link down below.